you can only have this far and who so the Beautiful Barbados. The Chief Labour Officer explains a significant change to the Shops Act. A local meet presented in an entirely new way at AgroFest. And in sports, credible performances by Barbadian drivers at this weekend's Winter Cup. Credible. Balanced. Committed. This is the CBC Evening News. Good evening, I'm Michelle Arthur with this Sunday, February 28th edition of the CBC Evening News. Recent amendments to the SHOPS Act do not increase the number of hours an employee is supposed to be on the job. This is being stressed by Chief Labor Officer Vincent Burnett. The changes have been viewed as taking Barbados a step closer to a 24-hour society. Mr. Burnett, however, explains that while the amendments allow shops to open longer, the length of time an employee is expected to be at work has not changed. A shop can open from 7 in the morning on Mondays and it can go straight through until 10 p.m. on Sunday night. Therefore, the only break would be from 10 p.m. Sunday to 7 a.m. Monday. And therefore, a shop could open during that time. It does not change the hours that employees should work. It is still five days on, eight hours a day, eight hours a day, 40 hours a week. But the shop itself uh, can be open. Mr. Burnett was addressing the Barbados Workers' Union midterm meeting at Solidarity House. He also highlighted some of the differences from the original act, including the concept of a closed day. This act now excludes public holidays, and it includes independence there. So there were um, Good Friday, Easter Day, Christmas Day, and Independence Day. Those are now what, if you want to say, remain. 
and therefore there are closed days. Meanwhile, the BWU has hinted that it may be joining forces with the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union on the school-based assessment issue. The issue arose over a year ago after teachers demanded that they be paid for correcting the Caribbean Examinations Council's school-based assessments. General Secretary Tony Moore has suggested they may be lending support to their sister union. We have had our sister union, the BSTU, the Barbados Secondary Teachers Union, demanding payment from one institution for assessments that teachers undertake. We may now have to show public dissatisfaction with approaches by that said institution to deny workers their due. Ms. Moore also gave attendees at the BWU meeting an update on outstanding matters, including those at the Sandy Lane Hotel and the Barbados Water Authority. In the case of Sandy Lane, there still remains the issue of good faith bargaining where commitments made to pay increases have not been honored. And where in the case of the Barbados Water Authority, we have agreements made, or we had agreements made to move forward with a compensation system that would allow workers to move through salary ranges on the basis of their input and merit. But that progress lagged. A St. Philip youth reportedly caught in the act cultivating cannabis plants has been arrested by police. He is 19-year-old Elron Adrian Gill of Congo Road. He will appear in the District C Magistrates Court tomorrow on drug charges. Police say a week-long operation at Bushy Park Cemetery resulted in yesterday's drug bust. Gill was, Gill was held after he was reportedly seen tending to cannabis plants at around 10 minutes to 6 in the evening. 301 cannabis plants were seized, weighing 2.5 kilograms. Gill was also found with a scissors. When he appears in court tomorrow, he will face charges of possession, intent to supply, trafficking, and cultivation of cannabis. He has also been charged with possession of an apparatus. We have more news for you in just a moment. Buy your TV where you buy your tuna. Shop at Quartz now for the best range in televisions. Quartz, bringing value home. Oh, and we deliver. A lot of people think that fast clips are cool. And the girls show like the guys who write them. But, like so many things about life, you've got to be careful. Having sex without a condom is like wearing a bike without a helmet. It's just plain dumb. It's okay to have fun as long as you're smart about it. My name is Daniel the Lion Fortress, and I'm different, and I'm making a difference. Live up, love, protect, respect. Coming this Monday on TV8. Well, today we're at AgroFest, but on Monday we're discussing what does Barbados mean to you at 50 years old. That's the big discussion. Then we have our Bajan rhythm and vibes as well. And our Panache segment is coming up with Marsha Greenwich. She's going to be sharing with us the latest in nail art and, of course, taking care of them as well. That's all Monday on The Mix and streaming live on cbc.bb. Join us. Thousands more flocked to Queen's Park today to get a glimpse of this year's AgroFest exhibition. Among them was Housing and Lands Minister Dennis Kelman. He toured the exhibition with top officials from the Rural Development Commission, stopping by several of the Commission's past and present clients. Mr. Kelman was pleased with the high quality of the items on display. I am very impressed with what I've seen, and I'm happy that what I saw is not what I would have witnessed over the years, and that we are seeing new things very innovative and it shows that Bar Barbadians are coming back and using their creativity and they are not prepared to follow pattern. We saw some originality that I'm very impressed in. Still at AgroFest, we hear that the Barbados Agricultural Development and Marketing Corporation is continuously seeking innovative ways to present local meat. Some of its most recent creations include black belly lamb ham and black belly lamb burgers. 
Food Production Manager at the BADMC, Carlton Batson, told CBC the lamb ham, which was launched recently at one of the corporation's monthly farmer's market, is becoming extremely popular. It was one of the products on display at AgroFest this year. The lamb ham has been around for several months now, and the response has been fantastic. As, a matter of fact, as you would know, we also do a, a lamb burger. You, you would know that. Yes, everybody who is anybody knows we do a lamb burger. We also do lamb sausage. So it, it seemed like a natural progression. Let's, let's do another type of lamb product. Lamb has been very popular. And when I say lamb, I'm speaking of the Barbados black belly lamb. The ones that when they come into Barbados, they get fingerprinted and hoof printed and so on. They, they have the Bayesian passports. It's all local. The Community Dance Festival has provided an avenue for participants from across Barbados to further develop themselves. Community Development Minister Steve Lackett made the point during the festival's awards ceremony. Noting more groups are getting involved and that performances are improving, he encouraged corporate Barbados to play a greater role in the program. As we celebrate the achievements of our dancers, we must remember that for many of them, dance has become the medium by which they are able to empower themselves. I'm appealing to other members of Corporate Barbados to partner with the Community Development Department in implementing Community Dance Fest so that it becomes a program that solidifies itself as the bedrock of creating and enhancing the all-round development of aspiring dancers as they attempt to secure academic qualifications and technical skill sets in dance and its associated fields. Minister Blackett also signaled the intention of the organizers to make greater use of social media. On our Dance Fest, I Dance Fest journey through Facebook, we had a total of 50,000 respondents, and 30,000 of whom actually viewed on Facebook page. This showed us the wide reach of social media and signaled the need to be aware of the rewarding financial benefits that can be attained with a properly executed social media campaign. The Jamaica Labour Party now has an even more slender lead after Thursday's general elections. The JLP beat the People's National Party, assuming the government with a 33 to 30 seat majority. But yesterday, the director of elections, Orette Fisher, revealed that the PNP's Winston Green has won the St. Mary's Southeast seat following the official recount that ended late yesterday evening. Mr. Fisher says at the end of the count, Green was ahead by nine votes. This changes the balance of power to 32 seats for the JLP and 31 for the PMP. While we were challenged by our colleagues in accounts to wear African wear today, we are going to see if Shane Jones is going to make good on that promise. He'll have sports when we come back. Countdown to 50. Hi, my name is Delroy Worrell, floor manager at Eddie's Supermarket in Spikestown. This is our jubilee. We are celebrating with God in this jubilee. Let us keep God on our side. There's 276 days until our 50th independence anniversary. Tenders are invited from qualified security firms for the provision of security services at the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation for a period of two years. The contractor shall provide all management, supervision, manpower, materials, supplies and equipment and shall plan, schedule, coordinate and assure effective performance of security services in accordance with the terms and conditions outlined by the CBC. Proposals must be submitted in sealed envelopes marked Tender for the Provision of Security Services at the Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, the Pine St. Michael, and it should be addressed to the General Manager. The deadline for tenders has been extended until March 3rd. Requests for further information should be directed to the Human Resources Manager, Caribbean Broadcasting Corporation, the Pine St. Michael. For full details pertaining to the tender, please visit our website at www.cbc.bb and click Tenders at the top of the page. The Digicel Sports Roundup is brought to you by Digicel 4G, Barbados' fastest 4G network with speeds more than twice as fast as the other network. Dial star 153 number sign to sign up today. Don't let your data experience slow you down. Step up to Digicel. Barbados is fast as 4G network. More than twice as fast as the slow network. Get more with Digicel. With free music streaming, free WhatsApp, free Facebook, free Instagram, and free Twitter. Digicel, the fastest 4G network in Barbados. Dial star 153 number sign to sign up to Digicel today. 
Hi, good evening. I'm Shane Jones with the Sports News. Barbados Pride needed just two and a half days to brush aside the Jamaica Scorpions by six wickets at Sabina Park in their WICB PCL eighth round game. Needing just 118 to win after dismissing the Scorpions for 157, the Pride reached the target in 31.3 overs, scoring 118 with Craig Brathwit getting 36 and Rustin Chase 35 not out. Scores again, Scorpions 177 and 157 with Hayden Walsh and Jomel Warakan taking three second in its wickets each. Barbados Pride 217 and 118 for four. In another game, the Leeward Islands Hurricanes 225 and 147 for five. The TNT Red Force 406 for nine. Barbadian Sean Maloney and Trinidadian Ryan Perot are the inaugural Suzuki SR3 Radical and Suzuki Swift Winter Cup champions. Racing at the final round of the Winter Series at the Bushy Park Circuit yesterday, Maloney managed to keep his lead to take the Radical Cup. Meanwhile, in the Swiss, Perot got two race wins on the day, with Barbadian Ryan Wood taking the other. CBC's Sean Green has all the action. The lights are out and that signals the start of the second Swift Cup race for the day. And with the reverse grid order, Freddie Gill would lead after the first corner with Ryan Wood in second and Samantha Summerbell in a cool third place. Wood though will soon take care of Gill with a bit of a lead. He finally takes his joke a lot, which pays off for him. And he manages to keep his lead despite a challenge from Gill. After that, it was all smooth and a consistent driving for Wood, who went on to take the checkered flag and the win. Fifth race of the day and the final radical race for the series. And taking an early lead is Brent Cordwell of England, who led off the line with Mark Maloney in second. The two front runners will continue to stretch the advantage over the others. With Maloney making a challenge for the lead and locking up under breaking, which released the pressure from Cordwell for the time being at least. However, his efforts would finally pay off as he manages to get on the inside at turn two to take the lead. After that, Maloney would go on to take the checkered flag and in doing so secure his second win of the day with Codwell in second and Stuart Maloney in third. As is the custom with Mark Maloney, we get his celebratory donuts after a race win. But it would be his brother Sean Maloney celebrating because it was he who was crowned the 2016 SR3 Radical Winter Champion. Final race now, and they're off again with the Swiss Perot of Trinidad out front from early from the pole position.